These licenses are very useful due to the five year duration and low cost. The following information is aimed at radio dealers and resellers. Some end users may also find it helpful. These licenses offer a stepping off point from PMR446 into the world of PMR without the cost of, and complexity of an Ofcom technically assigned license. Firstly, let's look at the reasons for using the Ofcom Lite licenses for business radio. I won't go into the licenses themselves, that's your job. I'm going to cover the back-to-back -back channels, but we won't cover repeaters in this video. The information is aimed at answering end user questions and talking over whatever is available with them and how we can best do this for their business. Modern radios are very programmable and they offer many features and functions. We often find end users think of a radio as simply a push to talk, all informed system, and it is, but it is so much more. To get this out of the way is easy. PMR446 radios have transmit power limited to half a watt. That's the standard. PMR radios are set for five watts, and that's 10 times the power. This will dramatically increase the range. This is not 10 times the range. Doubling the range requires doubling the output twice. Coverage is in circles from the sender, so the area covered grows exponentially. A four watt transmitter would have double the range of a one watt transmitter. These licenses effectively offer a super version of PMR446. Firstly, because of the extra transmit power and then the additional features and functions offered by even simple entry level PMR radios. If you look at a Kenwood ProTalk 446, it's very similar to a PMR UHF radio, where the only obvious difference is the detachable antenna from the PMR radio. The rule of thumb is VHF for wide area outdoors and UHF for in-building coverage. The issue is our customers typically want a mix of both. Full building coverage plus the car park, oh, and the building just down the road. So coverage can be difficult. If you are unsure, a quick site survey or walk test could be called for. One way to be sure of coverage is to visit site and try the radios and see if they work. If you're remote from the customer, then you could offer to hire them a couple of radios so they can test coverage themselves. Probably best to charge for this though, even if you credit them when they purchase the radio system. Raising a PO proves the person you are dealing with has purchase authority. If they're an existing PMR446 user and coverage is nearly good enough, then it's easy. UHF is going to work. 446 is half a watt, PMR is five watts. If you're unsure of the band, VHF or UHF, then coverage tests may be the only way to be sure. Remember to use a display radio in maintenance mode so you can display the RSSI or BER with the 3000 series when testing coverage. This would mean testing both VHF and UHF and it could be time consuming. And you may also have the opportunity to add a repeater if coverage is insufficient. This could appear obvious but the available frequencies with your Ofcom licenses cover the whole of the band, so care must be taken to select only the frequencies that are covered by your radio's antenna. Ken would have a range of antennas for VHF and UHF. Antenna choice also affects range. WIPs are the usual choice. They offer the best possible range for most applications, but they are a little bit bigger and larger. However, it's usually the best decision. If you want to have lots of simultaneous conversations, then having users on different channels is a good way to go. This does lose you the ability to make instant system-wide calls to all your users on different channels. If you want to hear all the traffic or have priority announcements that everybody will always hear, then a single channel with different groups is the best way to do this. If a priority channel is required and you're not using a single frequency, scanning is used for this. This works really well and has some advantages and limitations depending on the exact customer requirement. When the radio is at rest in scan mode, it looks at selected channel and the other scanned channel and does this rapidly. So when either becomes active, the radio selects the active incoming call seamlessly without missing the beginning of the transmission. If a radio is in a call, the scanning normally would be suspended until the call is over. Can would have a number of configs available for different ways of doing this, and you can test these out for yourself and what works best for your customers. Many small systems have simple radios, no keypad or display. So this is very cost effective, but 
if you have just one or even a few display radios, that can be really useful. Radio users are just normal people. Sometimes you will find that someone thinks it's funny to make noises, say rude words, or those kind of things. A display radio will show you who did this. Once users know that they can't hide, they just don't do it. If you want to have priority in emergency calling, then you need to know the specific radio that's just gone into emergency mode. It's always best to give display radios to all the key workers who respond to emergency events. We're in a time where everything is available at very low prices on the internet. And if we're not careful, all the discussion with our customers is about price. Not good for most resellers' business model. If we educate the users on what's available and they select something that's specific to them, then we're no longer talking about price and hopefully it's functionality and then price. How this is wrapped up into an offer is up to you. Kenwood's part is the hardware, but your special configuration and possibly third-party integration is what takes a product supply to a small system sale. It becomes a custom-made solution, even if a very simple one. Kenwood have many configuration files to help you quickly configure radios to a specific user requirement. Please try these out. It's the best way to get familiar with how our radios can help you stand out from the competition. This type of Ofcom license is a number of frequencies or channels that are shared by everyone throughout the UK. Unfortunately, you will never know who else is using the same channels or frequencies in your area. For a technically assigned frequency, you do know the location, power and user as it's recorded on Ofcom register. One of the issues with digital is it ignores not for me radio traffic. You simply don't hear it. This traffic can interfere with your radios and reduce range and even cause occasional loss of calls, depending on its proximity. This is less of an issue than we have with PMR446 because they have many more radios out there. In order to determine if a channel is already being used, then it may be necessary to monitor the channel and listen to other activity on that channel. Given the nature of radio, traffic tends to be lots of activity interspersed with long periods of no activity, so you may need to monitor for some time. One good way to see if existing users are within range of your operational area, your system, is to switch to an analog mode with no CTCSS or DCS guard and then listen. You can also add an analog zone, but in mixed mode, and this allows you to listen to what else is going on, hear the interference, and still use your radio. This is for the system operator or manager rather than all radios, and it's using mixed mode, which is a standard Kenwood function. The two things that make the biggest difference in range are firstly transmitter power, and secondly, the type of digital modulation used. NXDN being far better at about 2.8 dB better than DMR, and that significantly increases the area covered. If we don't tell end users what's available and how it's used, they don't know to ask for it. Our job is to educate them as to what's available. They can then select the functionality that will fit their specific business requirements. Your Ofcom Simple UK license is a good stepping stone between PMR446, which is very low power, and a technically assigned license that is specific and usually much more costly. You may have more chance of sharing a frequency with other users uh, than you do with a technically assigned license, but having multiple frequencies configured on the terminals, this will rarely be an issue. The cost of the license is currently very low and it lasts for five years, so probably the perfect solution for those who need more range than offered by license free 446 radios. For more information and sample configuration files for those of you who are ready to buy, please contact our distributors or email us at the address on screen.